Hello, Kendra Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Governor of Secrets of Longevity.com. Those of you who know what I talk about, you know I'm big on going to Whole Foods for our nutrients first before uh, relying on any kind of supplementation. And the exact specifics around supplementation can vary from some people consider herbalism supplementation. I think of that as something different. Some people consider taking certain superfoods as supplementation. I once again talk about that as something different. So what I talk about as being something that's not overly necessary except for certain key things at certain points is um, isolated supplements. A prevalent thing among people nowadays, and sort of the mainstream medical model seems to deny this, but there's a prevalent selenium deficiency in a lot of people today. And this is largely because of the depletion of selenium in our soils. There are definitely pockets around the earth that has plenty of selenium, but there's also vast areas of farmland that have it completely depleted this trace element uh, from getting up into the food and then into our diets. And this also affects the animal foods down the line that we also consume because uh, we know that uh, animal foods obviously concentrate certain nutrients and a big one is selenium. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, you definitely want to consider taking in this suggestion because you're at a higher risk of selenium deficiency by not consuming animal products and most specifically by not consuming seafood products. If you regularly consume a wide variety of seafood items, you probably don't have any issues whatsoever and wouldn't need to bother with this. But in my opinion, anyone that uh, doesn't get a regular source of uh, selenium in their diet in any one food in abundance I would recommend just doing this very simple daily practice to protect yourself from selenium deficiency and also give yourself a little bit more than the commonly recommended dose just to make sure that you've got that supply for the preventative effects that having a good amount of selenium affords. So a lot of the major things we see as a problem with low grade selenium deficiency, we often think of deficiency as almost like a complete bottoming out of any nutrient. and in that case, there is one disease that's well known for being uh, a result of selenium deficiency, and that's Teshin disease, which is literally the heart dies in your body. You get necrotic tissue on your heart. And as that might sound, that's uh, not a good thing and can be extremely fatal. If parts of your heart start dying, yeah, you're in trouble. So in that case, we know selenium is good, but that is very rare. And that's what they're talking about when you hear things about not that many people are deficient in selenium. Yeah. Again, we have to think of deficiency as more what's the amount we need to function optimally as opposed to what is the average quantity that people are getting out there. Because the average person isn't healthy. The average person doesn't have a nutrient-rich diet. So we have to think in terms of elevating our standards a little bit here. Something that's extremely prevalent in developed cultures today uh, for a variety of reasons, but one of them is a deficiency in selenium, is thyroid issues. So it slows down metabolism. This is a big thing as people are aging. They're gaining weight. Their digestion slows down. They have cold extremities. They don't produce enough body heat. And this is all tied into the conversion of hormones in the thyroid, specifically T4, into a, another thyroid hormone down the, the hormone cascade. And selenium is key in enabling that conversion. Another thing selenium is extremely uh, implicit in is uh, as an antioxidant, because as a this is a mineral, however it's considered an antioxidant type mineral. It is extremely uh, preventative to virtually every type of cancer. So you have an abundance of this, you drastically lower your risk of cancer in your lifetime. It is also extremely beneficial for the immune system. You get enough selenium in your diet, you're going to have a better and healthier and stronger immune system, which everyone can do with. And last but not least, it's also extremely beneficial for protecting our DNA. So at the DNA level, we have certain antioxidants our body produces to protect the DNA and selenium helps uh, build up these defenses and prevent uh, damage that would obviously then be replicated when our cells divide and uh, get passed on down the chain in that way. So selenium is great. Now that simple practice I mentioned at the start of this video is very easy. All you need is every night before bed, get yourself a glass of water, take two Brazil nuts, drop them in that water, let them soak overnight. The next morning, dump that water and eat the two Brazil nuts. I'm talking about soaking them just because all nuts and seeds have enzyme inhibitors on them. Uh, the act of pouring a glass of water and putting them in there does give this an extra step, which you have to think of in advance. Uh, if you want, you can always take the glass of water the first thing in the morning, put them in there, and then eat them 
later on in the day. But you want to give at least eight hours for any nut or seed, barring very, very tiny seeds, uh, time to soak so that uh, those enzyme inhibitors can come off. And it's going to limit the mineral binding properties that all nuts and seeds have on the outside of themselves. So Brazil nuts are the highest food in selenium as far as I know. There might be some obscure seafood perhaps out there that might be richer in it, but very affordable. You get a bulk bag of them such as this. And it's a very great nut because it's also very high in saturated fat. You've probably heard me talk about it before, but I'm very hesitant to recommend consuming a lot of nuts and seeds. I always say treat them as a condiment because of those mineral binding properties, but also because they don't have a very good balance of fatty acids in them, generally speaking. They often have too much omega-6s, too many overall polyunsaturated fats compared to mono and saturated fat. We want a higher saturated fat diet if we were to look at our overall balance of fatty acids. We want higher saturated fat, moderate uh, monounsaturated fat, and lower polyunsaturated fat. That's kind of counterintuitive to what most people hear in the mainstream, but I've got a video here you can check out if you want to learn more about why I recommend that. So Brazil nuts and just throw another one up there, cacao beans are great because they are so high in saturated fat. Their overall percentage is lower in the polyunsaturated fat and that leads to less oxidation within our body. Now you're only taking two a day so it's really not a big deal. Um, if you wanted to make a ritual out of it, I'd say also throw in maybe some pumpkin seeds in with your Brazil nuts and you're, then you're getting some good zinc and a variety of other minerals. You could throw in a few other nuts or seeds depending on what it is you like and uh, you can even check out this video here where I give my top uh, few favorite and most recommended nuts and seeds. In the drop down menu below this video you can see a study that was done in New Zealand on a variety of people and they had three uh, groups that they divide this into where there's people taking a placebo, there's people taking a uh, selenium supplement and then people taking two Brazil nuts per day. So that's where I've got this idea from, taking two Brazil nuts just to cover your bases and get plenty of selenium into your diet. At first, for some reason, I was thinking that they had somehow created like a fake uh, Brazil nut to have as a placebo, but obviously that was the placebo of the selenium supplement. Um, but essentially, they found that uh, both the su supplement and the Brazil nut did better than the placebo, but Figuring that you know food is food, we may as well go with that. Uh, it worked just as effective as a supplement, but we're getting a range of nutrients in here. Yes, selenium is the main thing we're going for in the Brazil nut, but it's always nice to see that confirmation of how effective uh, food can be in comparison to an uh, isolated supplement like that. So like I mentioned, seafood is really rich in it as well, so maybe if you're going to have seafood one day, just don't eat the Brazil nuts. And that's going to wrap up the video. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite seafood is. I'm curious what people have to say on that, whether it's a sea vegetable or a, uh, a sea animal food. So with that, I'll talk to you next time. Take care and embrace life without limits.